Hi everyone! In this episode of 25 for 25, we will explore materials that get students excited. These are print periodicals that combine visual art, literature, reportage, design, commentary, and other forms of expression in ways we didn't expect or that challenge us as viewers and readers. Like zines, these periodicals cannot be easily categorized. They stimulate and inspire new ways of seeing and connecting. I guess we can call them art magazines. Thanks for listening. Students coming to the archives get excited about periodicals that feature young visual artists from around the world. Photographers, graffiti artists, printmakers, muralists, animators, songwriters, and playwrights. In the archives, we try to collect graphic art that expands our collections and that come directly from artists themselves. These can be artist books, print portfolios, exhibition catalogs, box sets from small presses, and zine libraries. These materials can be used in a variety of ways, like student projects or exhibitions, or for instruction sessions. Like artist books, some art magazines are projects themselves, experimenting with form, structure, and ideas. Many are inspired by short-lived experimental magazines from the early 1950s and 1970s. These mags existed outside the mainstream publishing scene. Magazines like Bananas, Emigre, Interview, and later magazines like The Coffin Factory, Fence, and Gorinica. They intentionally obscure boundaries of design and content, opening up space for something new, something bold, something that curator Helen Molesworth said, quote, asks us to challenge the perpetual present. Magazines like the big budget Aperture, Osmos, and Cultured that try to cater to a mass audience to small independent projects like His Mag, The Tenth Mag, Pager, and A Public Space. These magazines can be found in the archives. Today I'm featuring three titles, Got a Girl Crush, The Happy Hypocrite, and Foglifter. Got a Girl Crush started in 2009 as a blog by Meg Wachter in Brooklyn, New York, and Andrea Chang in San Francisco. Their intent was to draw attention to women working around the world that are badass and inspire others to work for change. Two years later, they started producing a print magazine, and they brought in editors, female editors, from around the world. Wachter says that creating a print magazine gives the interviews more impact. Quote, there's something to be said about having a tangible thing you could take with you and something that you can share rather than a link to Facebook that is easily forgotten tomorrow. Quote, we're able to focus on people that aren't really shared about online or who don't cater to the expectations of what's cool. Here I spotlight issue number four and its eclectic mix of artists and badass women. Moving on to the second title, The Happy Hypocrite. This title was started in 2008 by Maria Fusco as a publishing project that would, quote, open space for artists and writers to experiment and develop. It sought experimental ideas that might not otherwise be realized or published. Here I spotlight issue number eight titled Fresh Hell, published in 2015. This issue was guest edited by Sophia Almeria, who's a Qatari American artist and writer based in London. Quote, Fresh Hell treats in different ways the subject of oil, adopting an exploded methodology for intake, image, and text contributions. This issue takes a hoarding, brutally accelerated approach. Guest editor Sophia Almeria acts as a sort of proto-tumbler, a composition of school notebooks, war games, and oil industry pamphlets scattered as a series of different clues throughout the issue. Quote, all windows are open, all browsers are burning. Let's move on to Foglifter, the third title I'm featuring today. 
Foglifter can technically be called a literary journal, but it's truly a dynamic and evolving project featuring writing of all kinds by queer and trans writers, building a space, quote, where queer and trans writers celebrate, mourn, rage, and embrace. Foglifter is an active and expanding enterprise. Currently, it's publishing a literary journal, chapbooks by emerging writers, and anthologies. It also holds regular poetry readings and release parties in communities throughout San Francisco. Its mission, it says, is to feature the widest possible range of forms, with an emphasis on transgressive, risky, challenging subject matter, innovative formal choices, and work that pushes the boundaries of what writing can do. Here I'm spotlighting volume number four, issue number one and in particular, a poem by Vernon Keeve III. Being in Love with a Black Man as a Black Man, written by Vernon Keeve III, who's a black and queer writer from Virginia and a high school teacher in Oakland, California. Keeve recently won awards for his book, Southern Migrant Mixtape, published by Oakland-based press, Nomadic Press in 2018. I think I'll conclude here by saying thanks for joining me today on our tour of periodicals that cannot be easily categorized, yet for that reason they inspire us and stimulate us to new ways of seeing and connecting. See you next time.